Hi guys, Rich from Dinoport. Mark, an experienced racer, asked me about gas, so I'm doing a video. A lot of confusion, uh, mostly false data out there, especially these guys with a super flow that aren't at peak for a long time. So I use my wife's grocery getter. She always parks next to a Subaru when she goes into town to get groceries. 710 horse, six speed Roush Mustang. And I asked her the other night, she's 71 years old, I said, honey, if we decide to put on an overdrive supercharger pulley and pick her up 30 horse, are we going to need to get it reprogrammed for more fuel? She goes, of course, or you won't make any more power. So guys, the basis of this is it's all a ratio. Um, John Force's funny car that makes 10,000 horse and uses 15 gallons in uh, four seconds, uh, that's how he makes the horsepower. So back to your stock sled, um, there's always a little bit of a safety factor programmed in their ECU. Um, so when they tell you to run 91 octane, that's for when you're running a lake, cold temps. Most of the times you could buy fine with 89. Uh, we took a trip to Florida, cruised at 90 miles an hour. I decided to put uh, 89 in instead of 91 or 93. We picked up... Uh, a little over a mile per gallon because the car was running more on the edge. Um, again, engineering always gives you a little bit of safety factor. So let's get into the other misconception. Everybody thinks they need to dyno to tune their PC5 on a new sled that's modified. Absolutely not. In the old days we went out in the field, we had a main jet, a wrench, we changed the needle, we changed the slide, uh, cut away, we change the low speed to fine tune it. It's much easier nowadays. Just get out your laptop. You don't get dirty. If you want to change your main jet, you add one or two percent fuel. You do the same in the mid range. Another complete misconception, which you'll see, uh, Roush and Ford Engineering uh, knows what's going on more than I do, and the rest of us. So when I rev the car easily from a thousand up to two thousand, you notice the air fuel went a little bit richer, which it should. Uh, when I stabbed it, and again, um, when I'm out on the road and I really hit this and the supercharge comes in and the horsepower, I think the air fuel drops down into, I forget, the 9 or 10 range because it needs the richer fuel ratio on that much horsepower. So all you guys that want to run an air fuel gauge on your new sled, it's, it's nuts. Nobody knows, including me with 18,000 dyno runs, what the absolute air fuel is for your sled. And the reason being, your air fuel will change slightly as you saw when the car lightly accelerated. Uh, and this is another question. I get phone calls all day long and, and fake dyno operators riching up your mid-range. Guys, your mid-range should run hot on your EGT. Your sled's not making the power. It's not what I call making violent or true horsepower. So just like this car at a a cruising ratio it's going to be leaner than when we're into the gas and making the horsepower. So that being said, let's get into what the gas actually does. Your pump gas, if you're um, drag racing a stock sled and you haven't done any modifications, uh, 500 feet, 1,000 feet, you're going to be better off with 87 octane because you're going to get closer to the correct burn rate. So the question Mark was asking, because guys at the races have a mixture of race gas in their stocker. The reason they do, they have an advanced timing key, they've cheated, they've cut the head, so they now need a better uh, octane. Most of them have too high octane um, in 500 feet, even though they're cheating, they'd probably get by with 93. Which brings up another point, another complete misconception. A lot of dyno operators tell a guy to run 93, they add timing, they do a sweep run, they're at peak for one second. The most horsepower on a stock engine that has a timing key or a head cuff is with 90 or 91 non-ethanol. The reason being, uh, non-ethanol fuel has more BTUs than ethanol fuel. So again, it's, it's simple, um, simple math, guys. You're not going to make the horsepower with ethanol in your fuel that you are with 90, 91, non-ethanol. Um, the other complete misconception, you see all these guys, especially the, on the 850 now, trying to fleece customers with a 180 horsepower ported machine and a resistor for more fuel or no resistor. Now the resistors on the Skidoo's might give you 1%. Uh, 
very little. So if you take a 166 horse machine and you make 14 horse more, you're going to need a PC5. Um, but realistically, a Ford job is going to give you four or five. So the easy way to see if you're getting a straight story on anything, if a guy tells you he's got all this stuff and he's going to add 20 horse to your sled, you need to ask him the percent of the fuel. So hope this helps, guys. By the way, this is my uh, mod XP. Uh, 19 to 1 compression, four paper thin carbs, bigger volume pipe than our production, and we're running it straighter. Um, 118 oxygenated fuel makes 183 horse at uh, 83, 8400. So, how's your ETEC 850 on pump gas and a goofy pipe and port job making 190 in stock fuel? Speaking of fuel, I sell Sunoco. Sunoco and VT, guys, they dyno the same. So I hear all these guys at the races, oh, I can't run it, my jetting is going to be different. One, one last thing that I bring, bring up. The only difference on jetting on fuels when it's the same octane is what we call specific gravity. That's the weight of the fuel, which means how much it's going to go through the jet. So if your specific gravity is different on two different brands, it's going to be um, one jet difference. Same, uh, we run into the oxygenated fuel, people panic, ah, I'm going to go up four or five jets. No, a 118 oxygenated on this 183 horse engine, I'm picking up two to three horsepower, one main jet. Guys, I hope this helps. Uh, message me if you've got any questions, uh, and let me know if you need any other videos. Thanks.